Chapter 1. The Dream A very distinct shriek broke the stillness. It was almost as if the bird was trying to get his attention, because he had never heard a bird squawk like that. He looked in every direction to see if he could distinguish which direction the sound was coming from. He looked up to the sky and waited for the bird to pass, but the tree blocked his view. He climbed up a tree to see if he could spot the bird. Again, he heard the bird call. This time, he heard it right above him. As he had made his way up to the tree, he saw the shadow of the bird next to the tree he was climbing. He saw the bird settle at the top, so he climbed up as fast as he could to get a better view. When he got there, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. An extremely colorful bird with feathers of all different colors and a colossal posture stood still with keen eyes staring right back at him. He stared back in awe, waiting for something to happen. It was almost like the bird wanted to communicate something to him. He had never seen a bird like that on the island before. The bird spread his wings. Again, the bird shrieked at him. This time, the bird started to hover and stared him down, flapping its wings. The bird call echoed much louder. Then the bird flew off. Follow the bird. He heard a voice come from the heavens above. Startling, somewhat confused on what he had just seen and now heard. This voice scared him. He was in disbelief. Follow the bird. Again, he heard the voice, but this time, louder. He took action. He climbed down as fast as he could from the tree. Jumping up from almost 20 feet, he started to run after the bird as soon as he hit the ground. Running as if his life depended on it. He followed the bird. Follow the bird. He kept hearing the voice as he pursued the vivid bird. Looking up and glancing between the tree branches, he ran fast, making sure he wouldn't lose sight of it. His eyes paced up and down as he looked to the sky and ground, following the bird's shadow as well. He jumped anything that would get in his path, determined to follow the vibrant bird until the end to see where and what it would lead him to. Keep following. Follow the bird. He kept hearing the voice, but the bird suddenly disappeared. He could no longer see it. Catching his breath, he looked up to the sky, looked all around, paced back and forth, but nothing. It vanished. It was getting late. The sky was turning black. He was so focused on catching up to the bird that he ran without thought. He had no idea what direction he had ran to. He knew the entire island yet had no clue where he was. He was in the place he had never seen before. The sky kept getting darker. A tumult of noises, belonging mostly to the critters, resonated through the air and were accompanied by the croaks of the frogs in the nearby ponds. Losing all hope of seeing the bird again, he turned around and attempted to make his way back home. As he walked, he was having a hard time figuring out which direction home was. He was confused. Now, darkness was upon him, and the only light that guided him came from the four moons that lit up planet Sebi. He slowly moved onward deeper into the jungle. He passed countless passages which all looked similar. The whole place was like a maze. The passages each had their own twists, turns, and destinations. He eventually made it to what it seemed like some sort of lair. A vast old wooden door blocked his path. Symbols and strange writings covered the lair which was somehow untouched by time and element. He stepped closer to inspect it and all of a sudden he heard a loud thump. As he turned to see where the sound came from, Two ravenous eyes stared right at him with reserve intensity from its scaly sockets. A reptilian nose rest below, but it was the serpentine-like mouth below that caught his attention. 
A creepy smile revealed monstrous teeth and a very long tongue. Reptilian-like skin covered its body in flickering energies that seemed like rings of light burst around its torso. As the demonic creature made its way toward him, it slithered its way, revealing its serpent-like form. Stunned by what he was witnessing, fear started to creep up on him. Suddenly, the creature spoke to him in a soft, sweet voice. Its voice resonated and echoed into his mind with magic-filled waves. It was powerful. Where are my birds? I know you have my birds. As the demonic creature was speaking, it started to transform into a dazzling figure. Half human, half serpent. The demon transformed into a female creature. It had different shades of long gold black and blue hair. It had radiant gray eyes, luscious lips, and an exquisite figure. Shocked with what he was seeing, he was at a loss for words. Where are my birds? Where are my birds? I know you have my birds. I know I have my birds. Release them to me. Release them to me. She got closer and closer to him. Her words forcefully rang inside his mind. Hypnotized by her beauty and sweet voice, he froze in place. Where are my birds? I know you have my birds. My birds. Give them to me now. Give them to me now. Now, with an angry and desperate tone, she requested to have her birds back. The demon flew right in front of his face and violently yelled out, "Where are my birds? My birds." I know you have my birds. You have my birds. Suddenly, the old wooden door slowly opened by itself behind him. He saw his opportunity to escape from the creature's grasp. As he was about to turn and run into the lair, with her mouth open and massive fangs showing, the serpentine-like creature plunged at him. He fell to the floor, covered his face with his arms, and yelled out with a fear he had never felt before. I don't know where your birds are. Suddenly, the bird he was following earlier flew in with sharp, vicious claws, hawking straight at the evil creature. As it was about to strike, the half snake, half human vanished. He opened his eyes and there stood the bird at the entrance of the lair. A soft call from the bird gathered his focus. The bird looked at him, turned around, and flew inside the lair. Follow the bird. Follow the bird. Again, he heard the voice talking to him, hesitant to follow the bird into the lair. He took a deep breath, pumped his chest, and faintly ran inside. As he made his way inside the lair, everything turned pitch black. His next two steps sent him free falling down a deep black hole. He screamed, kicked, and tried to grab to anything that it would save his fall, but it was pointless. His blood rushed all the way to his face as he descended into the bottomless pit. All of a sudden, his drop came to a hard stop. He lay at the bottom of the hole disoriented, confused, and faced with blurry vision. The fall took a toll on him. Get up, get up, he heard a voice say to him. His vision was still cloudy as he tried to open his eyes. Struggling to focus, he saw a bright light. He stood still as he saw a figure walking toward him. Wake up! He heard the voice again as the figure in front of the light made its way toward him. Get up, get up. The figure got closer and reached out to grab his shoulder. Wake up, Kino. You need to wake up. As soon as he heard his name, Kino woke up, letting out a frantic scream. Son, I've been trying to wake you up for some time now, and you've been tossing and turning in your bed. Gather your stuff. The game start in a couple of weeks. We must go, said Uncle Suzu. Kino was puzzled and somewhat scared of what he had just dreamt. It felt so real, yet 
He could not make anything out of it. Kino could still feel goosebumps. His heart was still pacing as he revisited blurry visions of his dream. Uncle Suzu, Kino said to his uncle, I just had the wildest dream where I was following this huge colorful bird. You can tell me all about it on the way to the island, Uncle Suzu interrupted. Come quickly, gather your stuff, we must leave at once. Uncle Suzu told Kino as he rushed to leave for Euthanasia Island. 